Hey, what's up guys? Cool. What's going on on a Saturday morning? I want to make you guys a quick video real quick about the life of freedom and um, what it's done for me and my family. I'll tell you guys my story. Hopefully it'll be quick. Um, how I how I got to where I'm at now. Um, I quit work in 2006. Um, took a year off, vacationed, got bored basically, and then I started teaching. I came out and wanted to teach in the, in the IM niche, basically, the teaching niche, because this is pretty much what goes on out here. Everybody's just teaching. Nobody's really, nobody's really implementing. Nobody's really doing what they teach. And I think you guys by now are probably professional enough and probably have been there and got the t-shirt to know that that's the truth. Most people out here just teach this stuff. They don't really do it. All right. That's how they get rich in this niche. I started uh, teaching in 2008, and um, what I got was basically um, an understanding of what's really going on in your guys' mind, and it's actually made me a better teacher, you know, as the years progressed up to now, up to what's well, 2013 now. So I've been actually teaching for about five years. So now I kind of I kind of understand now what what um, needs to be said and done to get you guys to understand the truth about this online marketing. I mean, because a lot of guys, let's just face it. I believe that, uh, excuse my behavior breathing, I just got off a treadmill. <laughs> I exercise every morning, so. <clears throat> I got my own home gym. But the truth, I think, probably is probably around 90, probably about 92%, 93%, probably. Not probably better than that, probably. Is in the IM niche of people that's trying to make money online, this niche. Um, most of them's not doing it. No, most of you guys are not making any money online. Now, that's not bashing, guys. We're, we're, I'm, a tran I'm, we're, I'm a truthful guy. I like to tell the truth. And we all know. Let's get out on the table, guys. That's the truth. Um, done heard the stories, how you guys buy all this stuff every month that comes out and go out and try to do what they teach and it doesn't work. Well, there's a reason why it doesn't work, guys. And I actually know the reason. Now, to skip to the ending of this video, which is what I would talk about, is if you do come into my trainings, I'll teach you the reason why you're not making money. I'll show you why you you can make money, guys. It, it, you really can. You really can make a million dollars online, guys. It's the truth. You can do this, but you got to know why and how, and what's the truth behind all this. You guys don't know the truth, and that's really the truth. I'm telling you the truth on that. Now, I'm not actually going to give you the answer when I usually don't have secrets, but I want you into my training. I want you to come up under my stuff. I want you to come into a real guy's training, somebody that will tell you the truth and tell you how this works. You don't have to stand long. If you don't if you don't believe, if you come in and you, hey, this guy's lying, this guy's just like everybody else. I'm not making any money. If you come into my stuff and you you find it to be untruthful and you find it not to work for you, you can leave. You can leave. You don't have to try. I'm, all, I'm, all I'm asking you guys is to come in and try me. Come in and give me a shot. Life of freedom. The life of freedom to me is being able to wake up when I want, do what I want, whenever I want, buy whatever I want. And just to give you a little bit of background of where I came from, we were broke at one time, guys. And I don't mind I don't mind talking about that because I believe some of you some of you probably are in the same situation. I don't think all of you were in a situation that like where I, where I was at. I'll tell you one of the main reasons right quick of why I came out of the came out of the broke world. Tony Robbins said it perfectly. He said, most people aren't fortunate enough to hit rock bottom. I was rock bottom, guys. Me and my wife was rock bottom. I mean, rock bottom as to the tune of screaming at each other, calling each other names. I mean, second year in our marriage, and we're literally cussing each other out, you know? So it, it was terrible. You know, bills come in the front, love goes out the back. You guys ever heard that saying? Well, love was running out the back of my door, and I mean, we were just freshly married. And bills? Bills, really? Really? Bills does that to a marriage? Yeah, guys, it does. Some of you guys that are uh, on the bridge, brink of divorce, or some of you that are going through divorce. I got a guy right now. Just literally just told me just yesterday. Hey, Vic, yeah, I'm one of them. Going to, going to the proceedings Wednesday. <laughs> like, God, man. And it, it usually stems from money. It usually, usually it stems from money because money, for some reason, makes people unhappy. So the people that say that money, they a lot of people say that well, money don't make you happy. They're full of crap. They're just full of crap. I think what they want to say, what they should say is this. Now that I'm here, I think what should be said is um, money is not the end all to your happiness. That's probably it right there. Money is not the end all to happiness because even with a ton of money, there's some days that you're not happy. There's some days you, hey, you just ain't, you know, you got nothing to do. You know, maybe bored or you may be sick or something. So, you know, but money can 
pick you up, right? Being able to go buy stuff when you want. Hey, not having to not having to go to a mailbox, wondering how many bills is going to be in there, wondering how many bill collectors, not not wanting to answer the phone. Yeah, that's where we were, guys. That's where I was. Holy cow, man! Bill collector calling your phone, you wouldn't answer it. Not because you didn't want to pay, it's because you couldn't. <laughs> guys, I'm telling you, man, there's a better way. Online is the answer. Online marketing is the answer. As long as you listen to the to a real person, guys, a real person out here, not some group of kids, because I don't know if you guys know this. I know this personally. There's a group of kids, thousands of them. Where do you think these cool graphics come from, guys? Kids can freaking draw. They are kicked butt on freaking graphics. They sit around these rooms, guys, and they come up with these killer graphics, and they put up these supersonic, awesome-looking websites, and they make you believe that this is it. Hey, this is shiny. It's all hypnotic stuff, basically. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Anyway, um, let me tell you. I'll tell you, Let me just tell you my background real quick for the ones that don't know. I was a uh, engineer for a CSX Railroad, and well, no, no, no I don't have to go back a little further than that. Um, I was a salesman. I was in the Marines for six years, but once I got in the Marines, I went to try to sell. I thought maybe I was good at sales or whatever, and I started selling home security systems, uh, burglar alarms, basically, home security systems to um, people all around Macon, Georgia. So I'm, from, I'm, I'm from the same hometown as uh, Frank Kern. Frank Kern used to live here till he got fancy. <laughs> he got fancy with his red Ferrari. <laughs> he got fancy. <laughs> and he moved to, moved, moved to, moved to Beverly <laughs> Hills, that is. I moved to La Jolla. California. Anyway, he got uh, too big for his britches. That's what we say around here. Get too big for your britches, Frank. Better come on back. <laughs> um. Anyway, I me and Frank return emails every now and then. But um, uh, burglar alarms sold them. Uh, that that was good for about two years. And then the then the then the uh, all the excitement of being able to get a burglar alarm for twenty nine ninety five with with no money down finally joined the other way. That's what I did. I did door to door guys. I was door to door. What's up, uh Dak I don't know his name on Facebook. He's a door he wrote a book about door to door salesman. Um anyway, uh door to door, knocking on doors, getting a slam on your face, <laughs> get all kinds of stupidness. But anyway, that that's the school of hard knocks right there, guys. You want you wanna learn how to sell? Go freaking door to door. You'll you'll figure out real quick how to sell. <laughs> you'll figure out real quick that you gotta say what people need to hear, you know, without without being too salesy, without being too whatever. Now that's good sales copy uh, experience right there. You can learn how to write sales copy, which is what I what I'm good at. I'm good at sales copy now. I mean, sales copy is not trickery, guys. I don't mean it like that. Because sales copy is just simply you putting together a product and you actually speaking and speaking in a in a in a tone, a non-salesy tone that they can understand. They basically just want to be. They just want to buy something from you, guys. Do you understand that? That's how you write sales copy. Don't try to push them. Don't try to be a be the sleazy salesperson. Anyway, going off on a random sales copy. But my story. <clears throat> Um, the the burglar alarms went out. Of, um, they they went down. There were no more sales no more, and everybody was not buying them because we done we covered the whole freaking city. I was the number one salesman. I was a top salesman, kicking freaking butt. I knew that was easy to sell at. And so, so in my mind, that's the, one of the keys, guys, is, is your belief. Why was I top salesman uh, over over all my whole almost the whole country? There was one other lady that uh, would beat me out every now and then. This older lady, but what she did was have referrals. She had an affiliate system. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I found out. I was wondering how, how how in the world is this older lady beating me out every month sometimes. Sometimes she beat me out. She had a referral. She had an affiliate system. She had a whole bunch of other people that she would pay to send her. Uh, so she had her own salespeople, basically. So That's how she was beating me out sometimes. But besides that, me and her was the only one. I was way up her, guys. Um, the average person was doing about 15 sales a month. I was doing like 80 to 100. Well, not that many. About 70 to 100, somewhere around there, um, sales per month. Um, now how did I do that? What well, was my belief, guys? It was my belief system. My belief. I knew that people wanted a burger alarm. I already knew that. Making Georgia, come on, man. I mean, the gangs were here. Um, they were breaking in people's houses. So I, I, I was a no-brainer for me, especially, especially since they had to, you know, they had to spend a thousand or two thousand dollars. Now, guys, this is a learning lesson in this. It's because of my belief, not because of the. I'm not trying to teach you how to sell burger alarms, but it was my belief system. I knew people wanted the daggone thing. All I had, all I had to do was get there before these other guys, these other yuhus in my sales office that would just sit around and go home and play PS3 or well, back then it was Nintendo or whatever, <laughs> right? I just, I just had to get in front of all the uh, people out in Macon, Georgia before they did. So what did I do? Knocking on doors, guys. Hey, how you doing? My name is John Hutchinson from uh, Scott Alarm. Scott Alarm was the company I worked for. 
and uh, we had 38 offices all around the whole United States, and I was mostly, uh, besides the other lady that had a referral system, I was top salesman basically uh, every month, and then she would uh, beat me out every now and then, but anyway, um, it was my belief system, guys. I knew that these people wanted it. It's the same way with online marketing, guys. If you have a product, you got to believe in the product. I mean, is the product good? Is it a sleazy product, or does it does it make sense? Or is it, is it something that people really would want? Is it something that your grandma maybe would want, right? You have to ask that to yourself, guys. You can't go out and sell stuff that doesn't doesn't sell. You can't do that. There's a lot of stuff. There's some things, guys, I see you guys uh, pushing online that's just really just you're beating dead horses. And I hate to say this, guys, because I love the MLM industry. Don't People don't get me people get me wrong about the MLM. I don't hate the MLM. I'm just telling you it doesn't work. Long term now. I'm talking long term. Even for you heavy hitter guys up there, you know I'm telling the truth. And I'm a truthful guy, guys, because I was a heavy hitter one time in a company. I was a top of a company one time. <clears throat> you have to rebuild your downline almost every year. They quit faster than you can put them in. Let's just all be honest about it. I say we just stop it. That's what I say. <laughs> Why don't we just stop that industry? It's almost like you're, it's almost like now it has become a scam. And I'm not saying it's a scam because of because of because of it, 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 people are lying to you. No, no. If you do exactly, I mean, if you go out and get people, and they get people, they get people, they get people. Yeah, it works. They'll send you a check. That's not a that's not a scam. The scam part is it's not really truthful long term income. That's the scam part, basically. So for me, I feel like you feel like you're stealing people's money because you know they're not going to do anything. You know they're going to eventually quit. It's like what a 97% failure ratio. Anyway, that's the that's, only reason I'm talking about that, guys, because that's a, that's beating a dead horse. You're basically talking about trying to build something that's not going to last. You're going to have to, and even if you do get to the top, you're going to have to jump. They call him I'm jumping. You have to jump from one to the next, to the next, to the next. But try to try your best to come up with some big ass, I'm sorry, big butt story. I'm trying not to curse anymore. Big butt story. Uh, to get your people to go, yeah, let's just go, let's move, yeah, you're right. And then you move to another company, and then you get all those, uh, you get all those initial bonuses that you get, you know, and you get to make a lot of money right up front. Well, the guy, the guy that brought you over, or the lady that brought you over, does. All right, but but besides that, guys, I love MLM. I think it's the most brilliant freaking thing in the world. Uh, logically, logically makes sense, but unfortunately, it just doesn't work long term. You just face the fast, guys. It's been like that since 1949 or whatever Amway came out. It's been like that. I thought I could change it. I did. I thought I could change it. But anyway, good lord, another rant. <clears throat> we were broke. We literally had ten dollars to our name. That's not a lie, guys. I literally had ten dollars in my wallet in the back of my freaking pants. <clears throat> And we weren't making any money. The sales were down. The sales were gone. Um, was married. Um, I was at a uh, Barnes and Noble uh, bookstore. I couldn't afford books, so I actually went to the Barnes and Nobles, was sitting in a chair, and read those Tony Robbins books and these motivational books, Jim Rohn, and all this stuff. Man, I'd read the motivational books, and I'd, I'd save the chapter and come back maybe the next day or the other day or whatever, and then finish start another chapter or whatever. Right? I couldn't. I couldn't afford the books. Sorry, bookstores. You don't want to put the chairs in there. <laughs> <All right. laughs> You'd find some people sleeping in the chairs out there. Anyway, I wasn't sleeping. I was reading. <clears throat> well, $10 in my name, guys. And I'm a giver. I've always been a giver because I've always seen my dad give. My dad gave no matter what. And I used to ask my dad that. Dad, why do you give to people? You, you don't you know some people probably don't need it. He said, son, I'd rather give to the 99 that didn't need it than miss the one that did. That's always stuck with me. He said, you never know which one's going to be an angel. You never know. Now, he didn't say that part, but that's pretty much what he meant. You never know. I just added something my dad said. You never know which one will be an angel. No, he just basically says, you never, uh, I don't want to, I'd rather give the 99 that don't need it than miss the one that do, that did. <clears throat> there was this uh, veteran or whatever, really. He acted like a veteran anyway. He had flag. He was this old, old homeless man walking around Barnes and Nobles with these flag in his hand. And I was like, oh, don't come to me, don't come to me, don't come to me. The reason why I was saying don't come to me, guys, is I only had $10 in my name. I'm a giver. I'll give my last freaking dime for you if it helps you. Well, guess what? There he comes, right over to me, guys. Came straight to me, man, with his flag. Was like to buy a flag, sir, or a homeless veteran? I was like, yes, sir. Pulled out my wallet, pulled the $10 bill out, and the $10 bill, and got the flag. Didn't ask for change. <laughs> he probably wouldn't have change anyway. Okay, well, maybe he would, I don't know. But, always been a giver, guys. Went home, and I had to face my wife. You know, we, we, we ain't had no money now. We're broke, dead, dead broke now. My wife said, um, when I got home, here's exactly what happened. And we were behind on rent, too. We were renting a townhome. 
it was an apartment, but it was called a townhome. It was just two story apartments all it was. A little bitty one. Um We uh I mean so little that you could hear the neighbors next door in the bathtub, okay? Alright. You'd be sitting on the toilet and you hear them in the bathtub, Bring me a towel <laughs> like good God. <laughs> it was a gay couple that lived next door to us. <laughs> you could hear the, 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 the uh the main one, the one I guess the the head honcho or whatever. That we, I guess someone I guess they I'm not really too familiar with gay people, but I think one of them acts like the man and one of them acts like the woman. Anyway you could you could tell when the man the man one would uh <laughs> He'd get mad at him. I said, bring me a GD towel. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> and he treated him like crap. Poor, poor fella. <laughs> anyway. Um, dang, where's my story going? Oh, um, came home. There my wife was. Walked through the kitchen. There she was. She goes, hey, run to the store with that $10. We need some diapers. Oh, I didn't tell you. We had a kid, did we? Uh, now we all had a baby, guys. <laughs> One year old. He's, uh, 14 now. Um, one year old, she's like, hey, run to the store and get some diapers. And I was like, uh-uh. <laughs> I knew she was going to call me every name, man. Call me some names and stuff. And I said, baby, I don't have the money. It's gone. She's like, what? Where's the $10 going to be okay? And I thought, I said, well, I was at the bookstore, and this homeless guy came over and sold me a flag. And he said, you gave him the whole $10? I said, yeah. I said, well, I figured he'd need it worse than we did. At least we got a place to keep rain off of us and got a little bit of food in there left and whatever. But um, I figured she was just going to start cussing or whatever, you know, at me or whatever and telling me how low life I am and stupid and whatever. But here, here's what she said, guys. She said, baby, that's why I married you. That's one of the reasons why I married you. That's what she said. That's one of the reasons why I married you. She already knew I was a giver, guys. She knew I had a caring heart. I've always had a caring heart. Anyway, I know this is boring most of you guys, so let me get past all that crap. But anyway, I just want to let you guys know that, hey, we were broke. We were broke too, guys. And I uh, I went to work for uh, uh, went begging God for all this stuff, whatever, and begging for God for a good job. And one day my dad called and said, hey, the river is hiring. Do you want to work? Said, yeah. Good gosh, yeah. I'm done with sales, man. Um, so I went to work with the river and became an engineer for CSX. Engineer. I ran trains, guys. Um, and... I knew real quick that that was not going to be something I wanted to do for the rest of my entire life. They uh, basically had a bunch of people out there trying to fire you all the time. It was all they were always in the bush. I mean, literally, guys, seriously, they would literally hide in the bushes and try to catch you doing something wrong. It was it was it, was, it wasn't a very nice environment to work for if you didn't like people, you know, hiding hiding trying to fire you all the time. It's it's almost a stress, really. It really was just stress added stress to you that you didn't need. I mean, for the most part, we, everybody was really good railroaders. So I don't know what they were trying to... Anyway, it doesn't matter. I knew I didn't want to do the first life. So what I would do in the sidings... A siding is basically a little, little like a little siding that you go into to let another train go by. Like if you had to wait on a train a couple miles away or whatever, you go to put you in a siding so let the train go by and then you go out at the end. Well, in those sidings, guys, I start reading books on computers, on building, building websites and stuff and started learning online marketing started learning I started buying all the scam crap from all the people back then it was uh, I won't even mention the names but back then it was a couple of them uh, there's always been scammers guys that, that just just I heard to teach theory they just teach theory basically well <clears throat> I basically uh, learned how to long story short I learned how to market online and what I did was I went out here and started selling products online what I found real quick was they were full of crap all those gurus that told me I could put a product up online and that millions of people would rush to it and I'd be millionaires uh, about be millions, uh, make a million easy was 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 basically lying. That's not how it works. I finally eventually figured out how it works. That's what you're gonna learn in my training, guys. I'll teach you what works. That doesn't work. You go put a product, and you already know that. I don't have to tell you that. You guys already know. You guys already know. You guys have your stuff right now that you you know ain't working for you. I'll teach you guys what works. Come to my trainings, guys. You'll learn. All right. Um. That's basically it. But now the life of freedom. Now let's 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 fast forward, guys, to the life I got now. My wife of a uh, long time ago. Um, oh, one of the things that happened though, me and my wife. After that, we didn't have no money, guys. That's when we started us. Uh, you know, that's when we started uh, getting kind of agitated all the time because we couldn't pay bills. Bill collectors were calling now, and we couldn't pay the bills. And we started getting mad at each other all the time, and calling each other names, and literally crying at night and stuff like that man I remember, I remember going to bed one night crying or she was crying I left her crying downstairs and we were going to bed and went, I mean I think I, I think I did fall asleep next thing you know, I got a pot of water on top of me in the bed <laughs> I was like really <laughs> it's come to this and I couldn't get mad at my wife guys cause 
I didn't know she had the balls to do that to you know, I was in the Marines, you know. Um I laughed. I literally laughed. Um, rolled over to the dry side of the bed and went to sleep. <laughs> but the next morning we both went outside and talked about divorce. Almost brings a tear to my eye, guys, because I'm, gl- I'm glad we didn't. Because we loved each other, right? I mean, you guys, like, like you, if you guys are going through the crap, you guys probably still love each other. It's just the bills, guys. We loved each other. Guess what? That was uh, 14 years ago. Guess what she's doing right now? Anything she wants, guys. Ladies, she gets to do whatever she wants now. Spend whatever she wants. Now, she's not really a spender. I'm the spender. But she can do whatever she wants. <clears throat> so was it worth it, guys? Was it worth what we had to go through? I'll tell you the other story of all the eight years it took to get me here finally. To be able to just quit work and stuff. I'll tell you all that story in another video, guys. Because I already already made this one too long. But if you if you want a mentor that's that won't lie to you, I will tell you the truth. And whether it hurts or not, guys. Whether you want to hear it or not. If you're going to have to learn the real reason, guys, why you're not making money online. You're going to have to learn that or you're going to go crazy. So come on into my trainings, guys. Come on to the, to the This Is Not MLM program. That's the program we're doing right now that's really working wonders for people. Got numerous five-figure monthly earners now. Numerous five-figure monthly, not yearly, monthly earners now. Um, got all kinds of success stories of people making nine hundred dollars, extra nine hundred dollars a month already. Extra uh, uh, four, uh, one lady just just put forty-seven hundred dollars. She's brand new in her program. Forty-seven hundred dollars a month. Got one guy did fifteen thousand a month. I mean, I, the list goes on and on, guys, of the testimonials coming in from this program. But it's really simple. But now here's what I want to I want you to ask yourself. Come over to the This Is Not MLM program. You can go to, uh, if you haven't already seen it yet. <clears throat> oh, got updates. Come over to, like, This Is Not MLM. This Is Not MLM.com. And check out the program, guys. See if it makes sense to you. That's all I ask you. Come here and watch the video. See if it makes sense to you. Right now, we've had a... Uh, let me look. Right here. Isn't that crazy? We've had over 34,000 people watch this video. So, guys, we're just only in the month three. We've got thousands of people right now that's involved in the program. I don't really want to say the number because I don't want, to, want people to know how really big we are getting. That usually tends to bring out the haters. When you start getting very big, everybody else starts trying to come tear you down. But anyway... Uh, we've had over 30, those are not fake views, guys. That's really 34,518 people have watched this video. That's pretty cool. We're in the, going into month three. But I'm going to let you watch the video, guys, if you want. Come on over here and check out the video. Uh, you may have a link already in this uh, email. If you have a link already in this email, please go to that link. Don't even go to this is not MLM.com, guys. There is a link probably in this email that you can go to besides mine. Go to the one, please go to that one, because that's somebody who's referred to you to this. If you would, go to that link in the email, guys. And just watch the video. See if it makes sense to you. If it makes sense to you guys, come on in. Guys, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm telling you the truth on this. If you give me 90 days, you'll be amazed at what you can do online. That's all I'm asking you. I'm not telling you to believe me. I'm just asking you to come in and give it a shot. Give it a shot, guys. You don't have anything to lose. You tried everything else. All right. All right, guys. I'll see you guys on the video. See you guys in the trainings. Look forward to you, uh, seeing you on uh, Tuesday nights. Every night at Tuesday, Tuesday 8 p.m., Eastern Standard Time, we have uh, live conferences. You guys come in and ask questions if you want and stuff and get your uh, answers, questions, and all out of the way if you get, if you got any. And uh, do teach marketing. Some people ask me that. Hey, do you teach how to market? Yeah, guys, you, got, you learn everything in my trainings. You learn everything in my trainings to be able to, go big, to be able to make successful income online. All right. Love you guys. I'll see you guys in the training. <laughs> and then you've got those idiots out there who are saying, just touch yourself in the chest say, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich. Heard those guys? I'm rich. I'm r- Listen, you can touch yourself till you get happy. You ain't touching yourself till you get rich. <laughs> you got to work till you get rich. Isn't that right? That's what it comes down to. People aren't willing to work anymore. And suddenly, the biggest secret, I'll give you the secret. Here's the real secret. Work. <laughs>